saving presets for third-party VSTs within Bitwig 4.4. Not the most exciting topic, I know, but I still think that this is a very cool feature in the way that it functions, and I wanted to take a quick look at this, make a tutorial for it, and specifically what we're looking at is using some of the native effects devices and other third-party devices and adding those to our VST instrument and then saving that as one preset that can be easily recallable in other projects and songs when you're working in Bitwig. So that sounds like a lot. What does all of this mean? Let's go ahead and press B as in boy while we're active in our device panel. We then have the pop-up browser and I'm going to add a hive. I'll just do a search for that. Let's down arrow to select it and press enter. Okay, and that's gonna open up for us. And what I'd like to do is let's right click and initialize. So we're gonna start off with a saw. And we're not gonna do any serious sound design here. I'm just gonna do some basic changes so we can see what all of this does. So for the unison, I'm gonna hover and mouse wheel to take that up to three. Let's take the detuning up. Okay, and we'll add a little bit of distortion. And let's also activate our reverb. And let's actually take that back. What we're gonna do is take the reverb off because we're looking at adding native and other third party effects to this and saving it as a preset. So let's close out the hive. And then one thing that you may not have noticed is that we have this little arrow here. So in the device panel, this represents our hive. We can click on the arrow and then here we can add a device to the hive. So let's go ahead and click on this and let's add a native device, say the course here. So I'm gonna double click on that. Okay, let's add another third party, clicking on the plus. I'm going to type in spark verb. Let's down arrow to select and press enter. Now, let's come to a large and endless because I love these. It's extreme, I know. Okay. So now within the device panel, we can see we have our hive here. We can view that for editing by clicking like so. Um, then we also have a native device, a course that is nested within this hive device, as well as our spark verb, which is also nested. We can show and hide these third party devices or native and third party by again, clicking on the arrow here and those will be hidden to access. Of course, we can click here. And so we can hide out our spark verb by clicking on the expand device window or plugin window. So say you spent quite a bit of time working on a patch or a preset and you wanna save that to use it in other songs. Now, included with these other effects that we added, what you can do is be sure that the hive is selected and then we can right click on that and we can choose to save preset to library we can also, with the Hive selected, do that up top, save preset to library. We can also do it here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that, and let's just call this test patch. The creator quanta is good. We can choose a category. Let's just put it on base, and let's just choose a few random tags for, for it. I'm not trying to be perfect here. Okay, let's put in a description. This is a test patch for the tutorial. And then we'll click okay. So now let's go ahead and select our hive, press delete on the QWERTY keyboard to remove that. Now I'm gonna press B as in boy to open up our pop-up browser. And then let us come to the hive, 
press enter to select that, it pops up where we know about that. Let's close it out. And then down in our device panel, we can see our hive device. And if I, now that that's been added, press B as in boy, what we're going to get now is presets that we've saved for this device. And we can see that the pop-up browser has automatically taken us to presets for Hive specifically. You don't have to sort through that. It just recognizes that we're working with the Hive device and when we click on the folder, it's gonna take, it take us to the presets for Hive. And now we can see here is our test patch. If I click once on that, then we can see the tags that were added, that I added to this. We can see the description. This is a test patch for the tutorial. I can go ahead and click OK. So now, after this loads up, I can expand out the effects chain and we can see our course and the third party spark verb device. That I added. So I just think that this is really cool and convenient. You can spend lots of time working on sound design and designing presets or patches, and then save those within Bitwig to use in other songs. And again, we didn't even touch on the modulation. So if we come down to the bottom left-hand corner and expand this out, we could add, let's just say, now Hive comes with its own LFOs, so this wouldn't necessarily make that much sense, but we've added an LFO. Let's expand out to see its parameters. And let's also show the expanded device view for our Hive. So now what we could do is, let's actually change the oscillator from a sawtooth to a wavetable. And let's just find something random. Let's play that back. Okay, so let's add some modulation to this wavetable as far as its position, and that's the wavetable position here. Okay, and in this upper field here, we can type in to search for a particular parameter because by default, we're gonna see every parameter that's available for applying modulation and automation to. So let's go ahead and click in the field and I'm gonna type in WT for wavetable position. We can see WT here and let's click on that and click on the mapping. And I'm gonna take this up and we can see that that's become active. We'll turn off the mapping. Okay, and so we may wanna slow this down. Let's come to the Hertz. And I'm gonna take the bipolar, turn that off because we're starting at the very beginning position. So I just wanna move forward and back. Let's go ahead and trigger. We can change the waveform type. Okay, so you get the idea here. The whole point of this was just to show that now if I were to right click on our hive and choose to save the preset to the library. It's already got the test patch, the same name. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click okay to what we're doing is updating the, and it's asking, do you want to replace the one that's already named that? We'll click on yes. So we are updating the preset that we previously saved. So now if I select the hive, press delete, B as in boy, let's come to our hive, down arrow, enter, okay. And now let's press B as in boy again, because now that our device has been loaded as Hive, we're gonna be taken to the preset menu. And again, we can see our test patch. I'll press enter. And then we can see that we have the LFO modulation that we added. And we can see that that's active on our wavetable. Okay, so again, this is not the most exciting thing, but I think it's very, very cool that we can spend lots of time working on sound design, and then save all of these presets, including the chain that we've added on to the third-party devices, and it's gonna be conveniently located within that pop-up browser. So as long as our device is selected, just hitting B as in boy, we're automatically taken to the instrument 
and we're automatically, automatically taken to Hive and we can see all of our user presets all the way to the right. And all we need to do is down arrow and then we can start navigating using the up and down arrows for all of the presets that we've created. No matter what project or song that we're working on, we'll have access to those. So that's about it, guys. If you are not aware of this, I hope that you are just as happy with this feature as I am. And we will go ahead and wrap up. I will see you in the next tutorial.